This is three video series on single diode mixers design and simulation using AWR Microwave Office. In today's video, we are going to talk about what is RF mixers and where do we use them in RF and microwave engineering. And in the next section of this video, we'll talk about what is single diode mixer, its application and how to create a single diode mixer circuit using AWR Microwave Office. So let's get started. Now let's start with what are RF mixers. RF mixers are three ports, active or passive devices. They are designed to yield both a sum and a difference of frequencies at a single output ports when we insert two distinct frequencies on input ports. Now, as you can see in the block diagram, as we insert frequency 1 on input 1 port, frequency 2 on input 2 ports, then the output will be sum and difference of frequency 1 and frequency 2. Now, let's understand about these ports and naming we use in RF mixers. So, if we'll see from the picture below, this is the symbol of RF mixers. So, here is one declaration. Before moving forward, I want to make it clear that in this entire course of mixer discussion, I'll be talking with respect to radio frequency receivers, not the transmitters. Now let's go back to our port discussion. So as you can see, the first port, which is RF input signal, it's coming from antenna. I just want to highlight one more point. Between mixers and antenna, we'll have other circuit blocks as well. So it's not just you can follow this block directly. So there will be other circuit blocks. For example, there will be some amplifiers, filters, etc. For now, we'll focus on mixers only. Now in the second port, uh, there is another input. We denote it with local oscillator input. All right. So that local oscillator circuit, we just introduce some frequency based on our output requirement. So we design our local oscillator circuit based on the desired frequency of this mixer. We'll talk about it in detail when we'll be working on or when we'll be designing the circuit of mixer. Now the third port is an output port. As you can see, we denote it with intermediate frequency output. Now if we'll talk about from the definitions or from the port discussion of uh, RF mixers, the output of the mixer will be, so we can just finalize the formula based on our previous discussion, will be the sum and subtraction of input frequencies. So if I just write it down, FIF, which is the frequency of IF port will be is equal to FLO, which is the frequency of local oscillator port plus minus FRF. Next, we'll understand the concept of up and down conversion. So these are all just the terms that we will use in this entire series of videos. And yeah, so in general application of mixer, we don't keep both frequencies. So as I've told you, using mixers, we can produce two frequencies, the sum and subsection of input port frequencies, right? So in general, we don't keep those, both of those frequencies. We reject one of those, either we reject FLO plus, plus FRF, or we just reject FLO minus FRF. And that is again based on the requirement of our mixer design. So if we want to produce an output frequency that is lower than the input RF frequencies, then it is called the down conversion. So if we have input frequencies coming from antenna is higher than the desired frequency at the output of mixer, then it will be, then we have to down convert the frequency, right? As this name suggests. And similarly, if you want to produce an output signal whose frequency is higher than the input frequency at the RF port, then we call it up conversion of the signal. Let's try to understand this concept better with the help of one example. So let's say we want to up convert from two gigahertz to 10 gigahertz signal. So we'll simply see if we'll add eight gigahertz into this input frequency, we can achieve the target frequency of 10 gigahertz, right? So let's apply that into the formula that we just discussed. So here RF input will be is equal to 2 gigahertz. LO input will be 8 gigahertz. And the formula is FIF is equal to FLO plus minus FRF. So then we'll produce two frequencies, 10 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz, right? We want to keep the 10 gigahertz, right? Then what we'll do, we'll just add a high pass filter and reject the 6 gigahertz of frequency. So this is an example of up conversion because we have converted frequency from 2 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz. Now there's another example. Let's say we want to produce 0.5 gigahertz from 2 gigahertz input. So let me know in the comment section what will be the LO frequency. Now before start discussing the single diode mixer, let's talk about what is the difference between mixers and frequency multipliers, divider or RF synthesizers. Because we can also achieve the desired signal with the help of frequency multiplier, divider and synthesizers, right? So in contrast to frequency multiplier and dividers, which also change the signal frequencies, 
So the advantage with mixers is mixers theoretically preserve the amplitude and phase without affecting the modulation properties of signal and its port, which is not the case in case of multiplier and dividers. So that's why whenever we are using multiplier and dividers, we need some sort of feedback or control loop, let's say PLL, by which we can able to sync the phase of the signals. And we also use amplifiers to maintain the amplitude of the signal, right? So that makes this circuit a bit difficult to place when you are dealing with RF section where we need really neat and clean layout and small circuits, right? So that's why we always prefer mixers for RF whenever we need up and down conversion in the RF application. Next, we'll understand what are single diode mixers or diode mixers in general and pros and cons of diode mixers over other type of mixers. So diode mixers are the most modern mixer design uses short key diodes. The main reason for this is the short key diode has major carrier device. That means it has higher switching speed than other PN junction diodes, which is suitable for designing mixers up to 13 gigahertz or more. The other advantage of using the diode mixer is by adjusting the barrier voltage, we can adjust the LO drive, which will be required to obtain low loss mixing and that leads to have higher linearity compared to other types of mixers. Now let's understand that with the help of block diagram. So there are four building blocks of a diode mixer, RF LO isolation circuit, RF LO matching network, diode or the DC biased diode circuit and the last block is filter block. Let's start with RF LO isolation circuit. So as their name suggests, RF LO isolation circuit is responsible for isolating the input ports, which are RF input or RF frequency input and LO frequency input signals. Next building block is the matching network, which is responsible for matching the input impedance of DC biased diode circuit and the output impedance of RF LO isolation circuit. So whatever is coming out of RF LO isolation circuit, it should be impedance matched or both ports should be impedance matched with the DC bias circuit. And there we use a matching network. It could be different type of matching. We'll understand that how to design that matching network in the next step of this video. And at last we'll have filters. So as we all know that we have some desired frequency of this mixer. So to keep that desired frequency and reject all other types of frequency and spurs, we use these filters. That will be the last stage of this mixer design. Next, we'll understand these blocks in detail while designing and simulating the single diode mixer and different blocks of it. So step one is let's start with AWR simulations of diode so that you can directly download using the link given in the description because I've already designed that in previous video and we are going to use the same diode model. Once that project has been downloaded, you can go to AWR microwave office from your start menu, run the tool, go to file, open project. You can locate wherever you have saved it. In my case, it is on desktop and just select the single diode mixer dot EMP file and click on open. Here we go. So this is the project which we have designed and this is nothing just the diode model and the IV curve simulation of the diode model. So just to recall that this is the package parasitics of the diode which is here and we have downloaded the spice model of this diode from the manufacturer's website. And then we have created this test, test bench to plot the IV curve. And at last we have just matched the IV curve or the output of this IV curve with the data sheet to verify that we have simulated it correctly. So in the next step, we are just going to create the di diode DC biasing circuit. Now before doing that, I'm just going to add some of the requirement of our diode mixers. So in case of this diode mixer, the RF frequency, so we'll just denote it with FRF will be 4.25 gigahertz and the output frequency we need is 0.5 gigahertz. So FIF will be 0.5 gigahertz. All right. So this is the requirement. And to achieve that, we need the FLO of 3.75 gigahertz, right? So this is our sort of requirements. You can add as much as information you want in this design notes, which is very helpful. I find throughout the designing and simulating different circuits because simulation can be as huge as possible. So it's good to keep the design notes and yeah, just make, make sure you're just noting down and mentioning all the information. It could be impedance of the tracks. Let's say you have designed a microstrip line. I want to use it throughout the simulation that 
number or the thickness of uh, or the width of that microstrip line. So you can just note it down here and then it would be helpful to recall. All right. So uh, these are our requirements as you can see on your screen. Now in the next step, we are just going to create the diode DC biasing circuit. To do that, we'll just simply go to our circuit schematic, right click, create new schematic. I'm going to name it diode biasing. And click over create button. Now in the next step, we need to create the sub circuit as you, you already know from the previous tutorials of AWR design environment. Now, instead of going through with the process again, as we already know that we have the sub circuit of diode here. So if I just select that and go to inner layer, it will lead me to this diode circuit, all right, which are, which is the package parasitics of the diode. So instead of creating it again from scratch, I'll just copy that from the diode IV curve circuit. So again, to go, oh, it's not open, I guess. So we'll just, here we go. So we'll just copy it and go back to diode biasing and paste it here. So I want to rotate it. So to rotate that, we'll just press control R and I want to rotate it like that. There we go. And we'll add the ground port at the cathode of the diode. Let's place it here. Now we can't just directly connect the anode of the diode to DC biasing circuit because we know that the, the input of the anode will be a RF signal, all right? And if we we'll just connect that directly to a DC biasing circuit, then uh, there will be a RF current flow from this to the DC circuit, all right? Which is not good. So to avoid that, we have to add an inductor or we call it choke. And that choke will act as a high impedance whenever our AC current will try to flow into the DC section. To do that, we'll just go to elements. From elements, we'll go to lumped model, go to inductor and select a closed form of inductor. Now to rotate it, we'll just right click and place it here. Now to limit the current, we need to add a register. As we all know that register has the property to limit the current. We'll just select a closed form of register, right click and place it in series with this inductor. Now in the next step, we are just going to add our DC supply. Uh, to add that, we'll just go to source and from the sources, we'll find the DC voltage source. We'll just drag it, rotate and place it here. All right. So as we all know that we need to add a couple of capacitors to this DC supply to avoid all the transient noise due to this DC voltage. All right. Now to add that, we'll again go back to our lumped model capacitor, close form of capacitor, and we'll add three parallel capacitors to it. So for now, I'm just uh, making some space here. Let's keep it here. Control C, Control V. Here we go. And next we are just going to connect all these. So we'll just connect it this, this, and these all will be connected to ground. So we'll just place one ground port here, which is here. Let's place it here. And that's it. So this is a sort of DC biasing of a diode. Next, we are just going to enter the value. So as you remember from the IV curve that, yeah, so we have looked for a couple of voltages across the diode and what will the amount of current will be flowing through that. So we'll target the 10 milliamp of current. So as you can see here, so this is the point where we'll have prox 10 milliamp of current and then the voltage across the diode will be 0.369 volt. And so if I'll be precise, uh, then at 10 milliamps, the, the voltage across the diode will be 0.3685 volt. And you can also tally that from the data sheet of the diode. So let's go back to diode biasing. Now if we we'll simply apply the Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, here V will be 3.3 .3 minus the voltage across the diode or the target voltage across the diode will be 0.3685 is equal to I will be 10 milliamps and R will be unknown. So from that, we'll get the value of resistance will be 290 ohm. And if we'll just look for that resistance, let's say on different distributors website, we'll find the nearest resistance of 270 ohm. All right. So we'll just make it 270 here. And similarly, if you want to calculate the value of inductance, so the purpose of inductance, as I've told you, it is going to act like a high impedance path at the input frequency. So our input frequency is to 4.25 gigahertz. If you recall that from the design notes, then we can simply calculate the impedance is equal to 2 pi f into L or omega L, all right? So it is coming across 1.8 kilo ohm or something around that if the inductance will be 68 nanohenry, all right? So I'm going to use 68 nanohenry here 
it could be any value which is sort of making it high impedance path for the input frequencies all right so here we have all these values next i'm just going to put the value of capacitors so let's make it it is in picofarad so we are going to add let's say one microfarad capacitor so it would be 1e6 and then we'll have 1200 picofarad and let's add one more smaller capacitor let's say 100 picofarad so these values are not gonna impact anything these are just to remove the transient noise from the dc source so our circuit is pretty much ready and next we are going to just quickly run the simulation so as you already know to run the simulation to get the voltage and current we have to annotate the circuit right to do that we'll just go to project and go to dc biasing uh, from here we'll click on add annotation so here as you can see we are going to annotate it for dc ia which is the dc input current for all the elements all right we'll click on apply and then all the dc voltage for all the nodes apply and okay and at last we'll just run the analysis and if i zoom in here as you can see the amount of current which will be flowing through this diode will be 10.8 milliamps and the vo voltage across diode will be 0.381 volt make sure the supply voltage is 3.3 volt so yeah so from that our circuit is sort of verified and next we are going to add the dc block capacitors because we also do not want any dc current will be flowing in the direction of rf path so we have avoided the current flow from this direction to this direction by using this inductor now to avoid the current flow from this dc path to rf path by adding the dc blocking capacitors so we can simply place two closed form capacitors one will be here and just copy it paste one will be here let's make the circuit and the value of these capacitors will be 100 picofarad and that is again based on the frequency we are going to pass from these capacitors right so it should be uh, low impedance for that frequency and for dc it should be high impedance and next we are going to add ports so let's place one port here and we just copy it rotate place another port here so this is our dc biasing circuit uh, i'm just going to name these ports so this is port one double click on this this window will open so this will be the input of the dc bias circuit and this port will be the output of the dc bias circuit so i'll just double click here and this will be next we are just going to save the project so this will be the biasing circuit of the diode which we are going to use it in another schematic as in sub circuit block so that's it for this video so next we are going to design the rf lo isolation circuit and their matching network for more tutorials visit us at resources.emaeda.com and don't forget to like and subscribe our youtube channel